In Romans chapter 12, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, holy. Now, why would you have to present your body a living sacrifice and holy if it was already done for you? Why did why would Paul write anything? Why would Peter write anything? Why would John write anything? Why would we have seven churches being rebuked? Why would there be any repentance even mentioned in the New Testament if it was already taken care of? You know in your knower, in the deep of you, that that is a false doctrine. That's not true. The reality is the reason why the entire New Testament is filled with admonitions on behavior and how you conduct yourself is because the king will inspect. And this is really the true source of great tribulation. The true source of tribulation is dealing with him, not the enemy. It's not the devil. It's him. He is the immovable object. He is the unstoppable force. He's not running for king. He is king. And his coming approach, his approaching presence, his increasing presence being felt on the earth causes great distress because people have to make a choice. They have to decide. Your body is a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, the least you can do, and be not conformed to this world. You know that there's a decision that has to be made not to be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And you see, he goes on to say, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. And so that's why it's so important for us to be found faithful. And he goes on to talk about conduct and how we should walk in this great anointing that we've been given. Above and beyond the commandments, for John was clear. Anyone who says they know him and keep him not the commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him and so there's this great pressure that's going on right now and it's not the pressure of the devil it's the pressure of the coming of the king and knowing where do i stand where do i go what do i do how do i feel and those that are against him are hardening their position i don't want him to rule my life he's not going to tell me what to do i'm going to do whatever i want to do and you see it, you watch it, you're looking at people right now who have rebellion in their heart, who are hardening their position, and they will find a cloak of doctrine of any kind they can, and they're drinking strong delusion. And then there's that other very small group, but a group nevertheless, that are saying, your will be done. Thy kingdom come, your will be done. This cup cannot pass from me, then I choose life. I choose your way, no matter what it costs me. I choose your way, no matter what they say, no matter about the faces of men. And I'm going to pass this test of the great persecution, the great tribulation, the great pressure. You see, saints, there's so much in the scripture about the difference between these two things. But because they were lumped together, you began to believe that tribulation has to do with people getting their heads chopped off and people um, getting shot at or, um, you know, being strung up. And yes, physically, there is persecution. There is. But look at what it says in Acts chapter 14. It's not just talking about just persecution, which is real, by the way. There are physical things happening to people who absolutely refuse, who won't back away. Amen. In Acts chapter 14 and verse 21, it says, And when they had preached this gospel in that city, had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Wait a second. Through much tribulation? Hold on a second. I thought that we we're trying to avoid the great tribulation. I thought we were going to get raptured out of the great tribulation. No, 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 no. This is how you enter into the kingdom of, of God. You come through great tribulation. You come through this great deciding, this great div the dividing of the two flocks, whether you're a goat or a sheep. You have to come through this. You have to come through it. You have to go through this press of making decision. Do you or don't you want to live in, in, in the kingdom? Do you or don't you want to obey his commandments? Do you or don't you want to walk in his ways? This is a choice. 
I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing, was great tribulation. He said, I'm, I'm putting you in great tribulation. I'm giving you two options. This is trouble for your brain unless you make a choice for life. Then Moses did something wise. He said, I adjure thee, choose life. When you choose life, peace will return to you. As soon as you choose life, peace returns. Why? Because the decision's made now. Now you've made your mind up. If you choose obedience, you know, whenever uh, I talk to people and they're giving and, I'm, and I talk to them and I interact with them and they say, oh, the Lord put this in my heart and the decision was made. And when the decision was made, I had peace. And when they had peace, they followed through easily. But people that are still battling, whether they're going to be found faithful, whether they're going to go ahead and speak the word the Lord gives them, whenever they're still between two opinions, oh boy, there's stress. Oh my goodness, the stress is amazing. If you've given two job offers and you don't know which one to take, oh my goodness! If you got, uh, if you're, if you're single and you got two people interested in you, whoa! You talk about tribulation. If you're, if you're deciding between whether you're going to stay in a country or leave the country, if you're trying to decide whether you're going to Israel for Shabbat or for uh, Passover or not, oh my goodness, great tribulation! Anytime you're in between two opinions, oh tribulation. Anytime there's a decision to be made, anytime you have to make a choice. You are thrown in the midst of affliction. And you say, well, aren't we supposed to get out of this? The way out is narrow. It's difficult. Conforming, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in faith, believing that which they do not see with their natural eyes, but walking by faith, meaning that which they heard, for faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. Amen. So re believe the word you've, hear you've heard, like Adam was supposed to do. You do it. Believe the word you've heard. And that way, through much tribulation, so when you are facing this alternate choice, you shut it down immediately and say, nope, I've already made up my mind. I'm walking with him. Nope, I've already made up my mind. I'm walking with him. Amen. If you are battling, for example, let's say you're battling cigarettes, right? Let's say that that's your battle or alcohol and you, you can't avoid it. It's going to be in your society. Uh, I, I can't go to the grocery store. I can't go to the gas station without running across these things. These things are going to be in your pathway. If you're still vacillating between two opinions, you're going to be constantly tempted. But when you have made up your heart and mind on a matter, then it suddenly becomes easier and easier to walk right by these things. Why? Because the decision's already been made. It's like when you've bought a house, you might notice other houses that are for sale, but once you signed a deal and done it and closed it and have evaluated all the different options and have finally decided that this is the house for you, it settles you down. It settles you. It establishes you. It perfects you. And so it is through this process of tribulation that we all must come. And you say, wait a minute, I thought we were supposed to avoid it. To avoid it is to avoid the actual decision-making process, the actual choosing. Are you seriously thinking that you're going to be able to avoid being a sheep or a goat? No, there is no avoiding that process. You must be in one or the other. Either you believe and it changes your conduct, or you say you do, think you do, act like you do sometimes, but in reality don't. The fact is, is that your believing reflects in your conduct. What did he say? He said that there's two houses, one built on the rock, one built on sand. They who hear his word and do it, built on rock. They who hear only, built on sand. The wind and rain come, knock that house down. Why? Not decided, not firm, not determined, not convinced, not fully persuaded. And so what is going on right now is, a, is an attempt by the adversary to paint a picture, especially in the West. He's doing a brilliant job in the West. The greatest tribulation is opinion. Multiple opinions being expressed in such a way that you can't make up your mind. So much is going back and forth, on and off, this or that. Is this right or is that right that you cannot make up your mind? And when you do make up your mind today, tomorrow, you, you want to be in both camps. I see this all the time. Somebody says, oh, yes, 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 I agree. But then over here, they're doing exactly the opposite. So your actions say that you don't agree, but your mouth will say, yes, yes, yes. What did the Lord say? With their lips, they praise me, but their hearts are far from me. You see, saints, we can't fool him. And there is no fooling the angels. Either you are or you are not one of his sheep. His sheep know his voice, and another they don't follow. 
They obey what they're told and they honor him. Amen. And so this is where our peace comes in. It doesn't mean that we're going to go without difficulty because, again, remember, persecution. Persecution is actually when they hate you. Persecution is when they treat you differently because you follow Messiah. Persecution is when you don't get the job or you don't get promoted or you get attacked physically or you get shot at killed in other way. In other words, uh, um, there's something that transfers from their spirit or the evil spirit realm to the natural. This is persecution. But tribulation is the deciding, the mental anguish of being between two opinions. And this is the greatest now than it has ever been because you have a huge number of people. You have all the non-believers, so that's part of the group. Then you have the fakeianity group because there's nothing else. I don't even know what to call it, but they are so far from the commandments, it's scary. Um, Then you have the rationalization group that know what the commandments are, but are disobeying. Remember, iniquity is lawlessness, so this group is getting really big. And then you have those that are believing in all kinds of false gods and false religions. Okay, so they're far away from those things as well. This group is huge and lumped in with them are the disobedient. So you've got all of these people in this giant mainstream group. What do you have on the other side, on the right hand of the Father? You have believers who not only believe his word, but do it, who keep his commandments. Look at the book of Revelation. It says these are the ones that overcome. They who keep the commandments of Jesus. They keep the commandments of Yahushua HaMashiach. They keep the commandments of Almighty God. Did anything Messiah preach contrary to what his father said? Absolutely not. He affirmed the word. Not one jot or one tittle shall pass away. But you see, there's a battle going on, isn't there? And they're, oh, no, no, you don't have to believe that. Oh, no, no, you don't have to think about that. Oh, no, no, why? Why are they throwing you back into this sea tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine? Why are they fighting you when you're trying to just make up your heart and mind? Because that's the great tribulation. That is what it is. Yes, it manifests in physical attacks because sometimes people get so frustrated that you're not doing what they want. Think about the abuser. If any of you have ever been in an abusive relationship and you're starting to break free, breaking free is the most dangerous time. When you are compliant and doing what the abuser wants you to do, what the what the Jezebel spirit wants you to do, what the evil witchcraft spirits want you to do, then you're you're fairly safe because they're they are they're feeling control and they don't uh, feel threatened. But when you start to break free, when you start to say I'm not doing it, that's generally when you have physical confrontations. It's because you are no longer going to let them manipulate you. And because of that, now they start to turn it into the flesh. So in the same way, the pressure comes mental. The mental pressure comes in all the countries of the world. Will you or won't you capitulate? If you capitulate, then we won't hurt you physically. The persecution will end. But if you don't, if you give in to the, if you don't give in to our pressure, if you don't give in to our delipsis, our great tribulation, then our threat, our threat, we're threatening you, we're going to threaten you, we're going to kill you, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And so let me just give you a word of advice. The best way to avoid persecution is to not be there, which is why the king said, when you see these things, to flee, to get out of there. Why? Because it's better to just not even be there. The best way to avoid being beaten up by your abusive ex-husband, you know, or boyfriend is to just not be there when he gets home from work. Hello. Amen. Uh, When you're still there, they take it as an invitation to abuse you. When you know you're being abused or persecuted, it's time to go. It's time to get out of that situation. And that is making a decision, saints. That is how we make our decision. Sometimes we just vote with our feet. Amen. And so, you know, don't think that that's, there's something wrong with it or cowardice. No, there isn't. It's wise. Think of Messiah. Uh, what did Joseph and Mary do? They picked up the baby and obeyed the angel and took him to Egypt. Amen. There was a time when they were going to throw Messiah off a cliff. He didn't go into Kung Fu fighting, <laughs> you know. Instead, he walked through the midst of them. It was time to leave. Sometimes it's just time to go. 
Amen. And so saints, sometimes it's just time to go. It's just time to get away from that which is trying to get you to go a different way. That's why it says in the book of Revelation, come out of her, my people, time to walk away because they won't give in. This pressure is going to continue until you either capitulate. And if you don't, then the the threats will rise, the uh, attacks will increase because they can't stand the notion that you're not doing what they want you to do. And that's what it is. It's abuse. It's abusive. When the, the king's not trying to abuse you, the king, the king frees you. He says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. The reason why you obey the commandments is not to get saved, but because you are. Oh, there's a, there's a twist for you. There's so many people that don't get it. They think that there's something wrong when you're keeping commandments as if you're trying to earn your salvation. You see, we're, we're fixing it. I should say it's an untwist because the wickedness of the wicked is to tell you that any commandments is evil, as if the commandments could possibly be evil when they are called holy. Amen? So we need to restore our understanding back to obedience. If the wrath of God abides on the children of disobedience, then where does the peace of God abide? Selah. Amen. And then the question is obedient to what? What is it that you're supposed to be? How does he make this dividing line? How does he decide? He's a righteous judge. How will he judge? See, this is where the great pressure really comes in. It's because people don't want to be in a situation where they have to be forced to make a choice. But unfortunately, there is no way around it. Everyone, I don't care who you are, will have to make a choice. And in that final hour, you're deciding between life and death, blessing and cursing, the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of the flesh, the good news of the devil. You know, he's got his own good news. He's got his own messengers, his own apostles and prophets, his own pastors and teachers. Yes, he does. He's got fakes of every kind. And what are they trying to do? Make you comfortable, make you peaceful, bring you to peace with disobedience, bring you to peace with doing evil, bring you to peace in your iniquity so that you don't care that you're walking in iniquity. You don't even know that, that one of the tenets of Satanism is do as thou wilt, do what feels good. Hey, you know what? If that's what works for you, brother, go with that. That's a satanic doctrine. Amen. You're not being changed and transformed by that doctrine. You're being allowed to grow like a wild bush. Instead, the husband comes in, the husbander, if you will, who prunes his vineyard, comes in and says, no, you don't grow however you want. I determine how you grow. I am your overseer. I am the bishop of your soul. I am your high priest. I am the one who fashioned and made you, and I'm going to bring you to where you belong. And so if you're submitted to the spirit of the living God, then you end up where you belong. But what if you're one of those wild bushes that says, no, I don't want to submit. You're going to get plucked up and cast into the fire. And so saints, what's happening right now, that's why when I read people talking about the pre-tribulation departure, I, I chuckle because they don't get it. There is no way around it. You have to go through. Everyone does. Because tribulation is what happens when you have to make a choice.